So a couple weeks ago, Substitute Topher had a chance to drive the Mazda MX-30, and today I have a chance to have a go, so I figured I might as well take it, because I'm not really sure what the next time I'll be able to drive one of these cars. Wanted to give you guys some first impressions, first thoughts on this. Uh, as you know, 100 mile electric car from Mazda, their first EV offering. In other markets, it's offered as a plug-in hybrid, but here in the United States, in only uh, certain states, it's offered as an electric plug-in for uh, just short commuters. And there's really only about 600 of these gonna be made. Uh, it's a low production kind of initial offering. So, what is this thing like? It's very similar to the Mazda CX-30, it's the same platform. We have a very similar rear trunk space. Really the only place where things are different is this doesn't have a spare tire, there's batteries underneath there, and the back seat is really, really tight and quite cramped for adults. Probably be okay for kids though. So we have this uh, door configuration here, and in the back, pretty cramped. Nice interior space though. Up front, it's very similar to the CX-30. Uh, very similar switchgear, steering wheel, and space. Just back here, eh, I have enough headroom, but my legroom is uh, kind of impeded, but at least there's a little bit of a cutout in this seat, which is nice. I think Mazda did a pretty nice job with this interior space. The materials, the design of everything is beautifully executed. You've got this uh, little homage to their history with this cork in the interior. And it's the first time I've actually seen cork on the inside of a car interior. Looks pretty darn good. We have a nice gauge layout with the digital speedometer and center cluster and a few analog gauges on both sides showing our power and regenerative braking meters. We have a nice traditional gear selector down here and we get both the touchscreen and physical controls for our climate. So you have auto climate, you can raise your temperature and your fan speed with these buttons or use the screen. You can turn the whole system off very easily. I actually quite like that, that's well done. It seems responsive. We have a very traditional shifter here so you get what the reverse and 360 camera looks like. Mazda's still doing some funky things with their camera angles, but I think it looks a little bit better than the CX-30, a little bit more high resolution. Okay, let's take this for a drive, see how it is on the road. <laughs> you get a simulated noise there from the speakers. From what I can tell, no one pedal driving in this MX-30. Brake pedal seems to be tuned pretty well though. Rides nicely over some harsher bumps. Oh boy. On first impressions, this seems to drive pretty well, but this car is still a bit of a head scratcher for me. First thing, despite the range, despite the uh, maybe impracticality to 100 miles in a modern electric car, why did they call this the MX-30? MX should be designated for their sports cars and they should have gone a different direction with the naming system for their electric cars. Not really sure what Mazda is doing there. Um, I mean, I'm all for an electric Miata someday, but this isn't it. And uh, I don't know, I feel like they're kind of sticking their foot in their mouth a little bit. You can adjust your regen with the paddle shifters, though I'm not sure if it's gonna take us, bring us to a complete stop. It's not, it's just gonna coast a little bit. So you can feasibly one pedal drive to an extent. It will slow you down pretty well. Let's see what acceleration is like. People were calling this slow. I mean, definitely not as quick as some other electric vehicles on the market. But it's not sluggish. It feels quicker than the CX-30. Suspension's tuned really well. Nice and comfortable. Maybe 
be a little bit softer than the CX-30. And you can see this is full regen right now, off throttle. Yeah, as an electric car, I mean, this drives really well. I love the interior space. If you don't need big back seats, you could just throw your kids back there and you'd be all set for a small, young family. The rear trunk area has about as much room as the CX-30 does. Yeah, for, I mean, dynamically, I really like the way this electric car drives. It feels fantastic. It feels upscale. The controls and interfaces are luxurious looking and aesthetically pleasing, but easy to use. Keeping with uh, Mazda's driver-focused philosophy. It's just that we don't have enough range and the name is a little bit weird and I wish we had a bit more interior space, especially in the back seats. But still an interesting first offering. I don't think, um, you know, from a driving perspective, there's a whole lot to hate here. Just philosophically, I think people are struggling with the price and with the, with the range. So I can understand that. I feel ya. I would have much preferred to see this as a plug-in hybrid that has 30 or 40 miles of electric range and uh, a gasoline engine that can take you two or 300 miles on a tank. A little bit of torque steer. <laughs> yeah, this is definitely a, a front-wheel drive MX-30. If you want to coast, you can. It's nice to be able to change your regen settings on the fly with the paddle shifters. All right guys, so just some first impressions on this MX-30. Let's judge this as a starting point for Mazda in the EV world. They're starting a little bit behind a lot of the other manufacturers, but I like the way this car looks. I like the, way, the usability and the functionality of this interior space, especially the front. Um, it feels very nice. It drives really well. I love the suspension tuning. It's really soft, but it still handles pretty well. We uh, could probably add a little bit more power to this, but I'm sure with uh, bigger battery capacities and more electric motors, that's never been a problem for electric vehicles. The instant torque is nice. It comes on smoothly and in a linear fashion. I don't think this is too slow necessarily. It would be nice to have the option for one pedal driving, bringing the vehicle to a complete stop, but a lot of EVs on the market are like that. Okay, well, there's the MX-30. Do we have a Monroney on this? We do, we can see the final word here. This car starts at $36,000. Of course, you are eligible for the $7,500 tax credit if uh, that works with your income level and incentives and all that good stuff. They're really only selling a few of these, so chances are <laughs> this video isn't gonna be relevant to you unless you're buying one. But uh, 143 horsepower, 200 pound-feet of torque, 18 inch wheels, 92 MPGE, and a 100 mile range. Five hour charge time on 240 volt. Premium plus package. This also has the Bose audio system, which I imagine is quite good as it is in the CX-30. Total price, 38,650. Oof, I mean, you know, after the tax credit, you could probably get one of these for under 30 grand, but still a little bit pricey when a lot of the other EVs are offering more than 2x the range. I appreciate Mazda's philosophy and understand the reasoning behind this, but practically they've got a little bit of work to do. 
but we've got a good starting point. They've done a really nice job calibrating this car and it bodes well for the future electric models that will come out in Mazda's lineup. All right, that's it for this one. Thanks for watching guys, we'll see you later. Funky looking little thing. Oh yeah, there's, guys, there's so much room here for an engine. <laughs> yeah, space the final frontier. I think we'll be seeing more from the MX-30 that uh, could be much more appealing to the mass market, but yeah, let's see what happens. Time will tell and judge this car accordingly.